In this video, I'll share how the latest AI tools can help you overcome five common hurdles in the web design process, places where designers tend to get stuck, lose momentum and waste time, which erodes your profits. With the help of these resources, you'll be able to streamline your workflow, boost your productivity and take your designs to the next level. The first hurdle, the most common difficulty for web designers is simply getting started. Where do you begin? Now, ChatGPT is something you probably all know about, and I'm going to share at least nine lesser known resources that we've never mentioned here on this channel in this video, but it's a great way to start an outline, something like that. If I ask it to write an outline structure for a website homepage for a marketing agency in Boston, USA, it begins to do pretty much standard for any website. You're gonna have the header section, then the hero section, the about us, but this can help you uh, break that tyranny of the blank page when you're going to Figma and you've just got that empty white screen. Instead, we've got something here that we can work with, that we can begin with and, and feel what's gonna be uh, the, the best thing. It's a lot easier for your client to react to this, to respond to this, to make changes to this, rather than just asking them, can you give me a sitemap for your website? Because this might be not what they do every day, but it is what you do. So I'd maybe just go into Figma and you know just paste this in to a text box. And then you can have this on screen, maybe next to your you know, your layout. So you can then, you know, have a frame here and you know whatever however you're gonna start designing and pop these sections in along here one by one and sort of see how that feels probably start with it you know with a little sketch on paper if you want to see something like this visually another thing you could do is use one of the website builders you might think well these are for people who can't design websites but we've found that the, the feedback has been that people struggle with getting started that's the most common feedback that we get here at flux academy from newer designers so you can use something like durable and this will do it in 30 seconds. So let's just try that out. Don't allow location. I'm not in Gloucester, but let's go to Boston, Massachusetts, where I'm not either. And we're going for a marketing company. The name of it, let's call it Dima for digital marketing. And this in like 30 seconds will choose a color palette and it will lay out all these sections for you. Let's just leave it in real time and see how long this starts. But you can already see it kind of blurred out in the background what it's generating here. And uh, it's going to create all these different sections. And then what you can do if you want to use this tool, you can pay to then use it. And it's kind of aimed at small businesses. If you look at the standard things in the drop down, not necessarily people who want to pay for a website, but as a designer, you can use this just to get started. So see what this is done. It's pretty wild in a few sections, uh, seconds, sorry. And it gives you this thing they've done the copywriting and this whole thing is in here so we've got quite a lot uh, going on here testimonials you know where you'd have your work section the location so kind of all the key things so you might want to screenshot parts of this and put that into your figma file as well and now you are not starting with a blank page and what you can do in your process is just improve this bit by bit and that's what we're going to get into next the second hurdle visual design so how do we make this look better well what are the elements that we have visually we've got colors this yellow and gray and brown so let's use some color tools so there's this one color magic and you can see there's already some lovely color palettes scrolling across here that you can have a look at but you just click create palette and then you just put in some grip descriptive keywords so we've got marketing maybe but maybe let's try something else like upbeat it only lets you do a few characters this thing and then you kind of run out let's put usa because it's in the usa as well and then it will generate something for you and you can see we have something which is is bright and it has that kind of upbeat sunny kind of feel to it and so all you need to do is you can just click on one of these hex reference it copies the color and maybe go back into figma draw an ellipse and you can just copy maybe you know all these colors over and then think about how you're going to apply this uh, color scheme to the design 
Next visual element we've got maybe is fonts. So how do you choose fonts and how do you pair them well together? This is something a lot of beginners struggle with. So let's have a look here. This site, FontJoy, is really helpful. If you click on this little how it works, it mentions that basically just sticks to some basic principles like fonts that are similar but not the same, have a conflict, fonts that share no relationship at all, don't work well together. You can use fonts from the same family or with similar features, things I've talked about here on the channel, but it basically puts all these into its algorithm. I'm gonna put dark on light because it's a bit easy to see. And you just hit generate and you get a headline, a subheadline, and a body copy option. Now, the cool thing is you can do things like lock, say you're happy with Libra Franklin for the headline, then you click lock on that and then click generate and you will get a subheadline and a body copy that matches with that. And you can just go in and, you know, select any font you want. So if you just type in a, a well-known font like Roboto or something, whatever you want to use, that's you've decided already that's going to be a body copy font. You then lock that and you get these other options. Now, what you can do is this is at balance contrast. You can say, I want things that are very similar to one another. These are probably all going to be sans, which they pretty much are. We've got a bit of a flourish on the terminals of this subheadline. Or you can do things that are highly contrasted from one another. So some serifs will come in here. Yep, we've got one there on the subheadline. We've got sort of a, a handwritten typeface there for the top one. And so you get this kind of thing uh, where you can keep generate the, these pairings that work uh, well together. So if you're building your confidence in that area, this is a great thing to use. I skipped over another color palette generator here. Let's try this one again. We had marketing upbeat USA, didn't we? Let's try that. It's a bit of a, you'd probably want to think of some better keywords that really describe the mood, the feel that you were trying to produce. Ah, so here we've got something that's very, very USA, red, white, and blue. Um, but maybe going to bit the orange and this cyany colors, getting towards the upbeat, maybe some brighter colors. I wonder if we did marketing upbeat without the USA, what it would produce. Okay, here it's more of a pastel-y thing, and we've brought in this uh, red, yellow, and this uh, green, tealy, turquoisey kind of green. So yeah, some different options there, not totally dissimilar to what we've got here with Upbeat. Definitely a lot of similarity there. The red, yellow, and green are very similar. And then we've got a light and a darker blue, whereas here we've got a very dark navy and a white. So definitely some of the same uh, keywords coming through, but this would give you a good thing to, to react against, to think about, is this gonna fit for you on your project. Hurdle number three that I think a lot of us have experienced is low res images. You are glad to see that email from the client. They've sent images through. Maybe it's these hot air balloons that the marketing agency in Boston were promoting the balloon festival. And here it is. And then you find out that it's 427 pixels high. And like, what the heck am I gonna do with that <laughs> on the web? You need it for a big background. But at that size, it's going to start getting pixelated. Now, they can't quite do magic, but there are some image upscalers that are worth having a look at. There's this one, Big JPEG, and I'll just mention these, and also upscale. This one you have to download. Big JPEG can work in browser or download it as well, and you can find more of these online. But these use AI to sort of fill in the details and try and make sure that these images are going to work. Sometimes you will never, ever get that original, bigger, upscaled image uh, from the client. And some of these AI tools, depending on the type of image, can do a good job at making them look like they're in a higher resolution rather than just blowing them up, you know, within the browser would do. Hurdle number four is relying on client copy. There's two parts to this. First of all, if you are waiting forever for clients to provide the copy for the website, you might never start. So you need something to work with to get going. So we saw some of that in the website builders, in the outline, but we can also generate more. And the other aspect is, relying on the client's copy for its quality, it might need switching up. You might say, well, I'm not a copywriter. Yes, but these things can hold up a website. So if you wanna handle the entire website project yourself as a freelancer or your own studio, or you just wanna keep the thing moving along, 
then you can evaluate and you can improve the copy uh, that you do receive or perhaps that's in their existing website or marketing materials. So one resource is Syncode and they have loads of tools here as you can see uh, on their website and you can actually cycle through different types of things, copyright. So there's a content improver. You can rewrite articles. Uh, it will write long form blogs for you and different sections and things like that. But even under website copy and SEO, you can have titles and meta descriptions that actually rank well on Google. So you can help with that search engine optimization, another uh, challenge and another little hurdle for you to, to get over for product pages. AIDA copywriting, so it uses this framework of attention, interest, desire, and action. So let's say we want to do something with this. So let's say energetic, because we talked about this upbeat marketing agency. So it's Dima, and let's do a thing again. Marketing agency in Boston, USA. And you just click generate. And then it it gives you a little thing here. So I don't think you would say attention marketing agencies to sell your marketing agency. You'd maybe be looking for other businesses. But some of this stuff, results driven partner, take your brand to the next level. Our team is made up of experienced and innovative marketing professionals who are passionate about creating winning strategies that deliver measurable results. This is actually not bad. So if you're trying to create that about us page or some key sentences for that homepage landing page, this will quickly, you know, throw out this kind of thing. And there's a bunch of tools here, social content, that kind of thing that it can also create. Another tool that I've been kind of fooling around with is Pi, which is a chat chatbot hey pie and this is new it's only come out this month and it's in a very early version but the people behind it one of the co-founders from deep mind the ibm project so there's some serious weight behind it and you can just start to uh, tell it what you're doing like i'm designing a website for for And I've actually left the audio on and this thing talks to you and uh, it really feels more conversational, more emotive. It's really interesting the kind of feel that produces, particularly with the voice. A marketing agency website sounds like a fun challenge. I imagine they'll want it to be. I'll turn the audio off for now, but it starts to give you some some. It starts to give you some little pointers, you know, as you go through even things that you don't ask for specifically, unlike something like ChatGPT. So it remembers what you're saying as you go through this conversation. It kind of learns you so you can begin to develop a more conversational feel. So it might be something just to try out. I think it will improve from this early version. But it's a, another resource. And again, it's generated something here, which is definitely better than lorem ipsum. And that's the key point. Use real copy. It will help you to do your layout and it will help move the project forward. Hurdle number five is forms. Yeah, forms. These can be a total faff. I remember back in the noughties having to create MySQL databases so I could write forms in PHP. I'm showing my age a little bit here, but AI is something that's going to help us generate these things a lot, lot quicker. So Feather8 is one of these tools and I've asked it to create a new project inquiry form for our ag marketing agency in Boston. And as well as the obvious things like name of the person doing the inquiry, the company, the email address, phone number, things we'd expect, it's automatically generated these categories like what type of services did your project require? And there's actually a drop down here with six uh, common areas. That, that's pretty clever. Uh, and then your estimated budget. When do you want to start the project? Additional comments. And then on the next page, target audience, project goals, competitors, brand message, value proposition. How do you measure success? So the sort of questions you would ask, maybe you ask when you're kicking off a project uh, with your clients. So it already knows about these things and that's saving uh, time, 
uh, particularly by you know adding things like drop downs and other things like that maybe if we had a, a more complicated form than just an inquiry it'd be interesting to see how it did with that another one of these tools is make forms remember all the links to these tools are in the description of this video I think there's been at least 11 tools that we've shared with you here and this one it's not done quite as good a job beyond the contact information we'd expect at the beginning it just wants a description of the project it's also asking for the budget and then a deadline rather than when do you want to start I guess both those questions are important and they've each chosen one of them and how did you hear about us which is quite cool um, so there'll be a little uh, drop down here where you uh, can choose you know whether that's from here's the the options Google social media referral other and you can like add other categories and these are the sorts of things you can then pay to just embed these you know straight into your website tools like that have existed for a while for forms but the cool thing about these with the AI generation it's going to generate categories maybe you haven't heard of or just be a time saver by already creating the type of form that you need hopefully you found at least one useful tip or tool here to help your web design process until next time happy designing